Welcome back to the Art Corner. We are back. Today I'm going to do a real painting. This one is actually kind of tough. It's not a tutorial. It's not a study. My husband said, why don't you do a barn? So that's what I'm doing. I'm going to do a barn, but it's not your typical barn out in the field. This one is back in the background sort of with a, with a uh, tire swing in front, a couple of trees. It sort of sits back. And it kind of gives you the lazy days of summer feel. So let me just kind of show you how I would go about doing this. And it may take me a little time, so you guys hang with me today. Very first thing I want to do, like I was talking about before, is my background. Uh, I've already got it sketched out, and I have got a few colors on my palette. I'm going to start out with a kind of a light white gray blue. And I'm going to get a medium brush because the background well let me get a little bit bigger one all of this is my background area and in any painting you want to go from back to front and your background space is also your negative space the barn and the trees and all this are my positive space so i'm going to start out with my negative space first let me get my blue and my white and i'm going to dip it in black just a little bit to give it kind of a far away blue sky. We're using acrylic. Uh, next time I'll be working with oil, but let's just do the acrylic today. It's quick and easy. Now I'm getting my sky placed beyond the trees, beyond the barn. And this color is very vague. and very background. Sometimes, guys, you'll find canvas <clears throat> that has some canvas holes. In other words, the gesso hasn't really gone very deep into the linen that makes up your canvas. And so you have to add your water, especially to acrylic, to get rid of all of those canvas holes. And that's what I'm doing. Right now, it's just adding a little more water to make those canvas holes kind of go away. Here we go. All this is sort of my background. I want this to be like a hazy, lazy, it's almost fall, aren't we glad, picture. There's a tree on this side and a tree on this side. And I think that's probably enough sky. Now the next thing that's beyond this is more trees. But they're very, very background. So I'm going to get, I'm going to use the same brush, adding a little green and gray. And I'm going to give kind of a back, just some far away, distant trees back here. And we know trees aren't gray, but when they're far away, they will look different, especially in a painting. Just because you know trees are green doesn't mean that you paint them green if they don't look that way in a painting. Here we go. This background comes all the way up. And the more hazy that I make this, the more realistic it'll be when we're finished. I want this barn to be set back. I hope you all looked at clouds from our last tutorial we did or our last session. I've really seen some pretty ones this year. We've had a really pretty, pretty summer. Here we go. I'm going to get a little deeper with my color here and there to show some depth. Once again, I'm using water as my mixing medium. This is acrylic paint. I 
A lot of people in this area can relate to barns. A lot of people, well, you see them on your way to work. <clears throat> and they're beautiful. They really are. They're very beautiful. Sometimes we'll get in the car, put the top down, and just ride out through Mendota, Virginia, and look at the beautiful rural countryside. And you'll see pictures just like this. Even a tire swing on occasion. Go. Now, there's my very back, very, very back layer. There's my sky, my very back layer. Now, <clears throat> I want to get, start coming this way. So I'm getting a little more brilliant with my color. Let's do yellow, green, and let's start with black. Let's go deep right here because there's a dark hole right in this area. Okay, it's kind of on top of the barn, right beside the tree. And I know those trees are kind of big and in the way, but since they are in front of the barn, they're going to be one of the last things we do. Now I want to get down here too. Clean off my brush with that grass below. Brilliant green can be achieved by green and yellow. And in order, you know, every leaf is not going to be, you can't make every leaf distinct. So you get a kind of a pointy brush and you just sort of show an inference of some leaves like this. There we go. Now, there is a really bright green, it looks like probably a branch from the tree above. I want to Get a little deep, dark black to show some depth. <clears throat> then I'm going to go on top of it with some bright yellow highlights to show those leaves coming forward. Green, yellow, white. To get the sun is really just punching down on this branch right here in this picture. Right here, the sun is just popping in. Bear with me. And I, I do, since we are kind of short on time, I mean, I don't have two and a half hours to sit here and just lollygag. I will um, impressionist some of this because it's hard to get every intricate detail. And that's one reason I did choose this picture. It looks like it'd be an easy one to just waller around on a canvas for a little while. I recently painted a saw blade for someone. We did a barn on it. You can paint on anything. Um, an acrylic will go on just about any surface. And in order to keep it on any surface, you might want to add a little polyurethane uh, or some glaze, depending on the look you want to give. Polyurethane will make it real glossy and shiny. And a glaze is a shine, but not quite as much as a poly glaze would be. But boy, it really does pop the color when you do a top on top, like a poly or a glaze. Here we go. I'm just adding some leaves. I may have to let that dry too and go back over it, highlight that some more. Let's add some more light here. Has anybody seen a rainbow? Uh, I have not since we did our last picture. I have not seen one. We've had a lot of opportunities, but I personally have not. Here we go. Now I'm going around my trees. 
Now I'm gonna get a cruddy brush. Save your brushes because when they get old and cruddy, you can use them for different things. This is a good cruddy brush uh, idea right here, just sort of to blend with. You're not doing any detail. You're just kind of roughing it around. And a good cruddy brush is good for that. Here we go. Just roughing it around a little bit. I'm gonna get up here and make this a little more interesting. Oop, a little too interesting, hang on. There we go. Cruddy brush again. That way you're not using, you're not really seeing any detail, you're just seeing some depth with this dark paint in and out. And when you get finished, you'll see that it's leaves. I'm going to take it on up. There we go. Okay. Now, let me work down here at the bottom. Same kind of same kind of procedure. I'm going to get a little bit of um, green, a little yellow, and a little black. And I'm going to go back in here first. This is grass down here around the bottom. And with, I've still got my cruddy brush. I'm just going to pull this up like this. Make that grass real loose down here at the bottom. This is the background grass. Kind of goes up, and I probably should have done my barn first, but we'll make this work. I always fuss at my art students, I always do your background first, and here I am, not doing that. Then we get our light in front of that dark. Here we go. Pull some of that grass up with drama. Let's get some drama going with that yellow and white. There we go. Now, I'm going to work up here a minute. This is bothering me. There we go. Change brushes. It's just not giving me the pop I want. So I'm going to go back here with a black. Really darken that up some so you can see this highlight area above that barn. It kind of is what makes this picture. And one thing about paint, there's really in art, I guess there are mistakes. There really are. You can make mistakes. But it's just paint, guys, and you can always correct it. Uh, you're not putting a tattoo on your canvas here that will last forever. It's just paint. So you can change it. And acrylic is wonderful because it is forgiving. It is, dries real quickly. And once it's dry, you can go right back over it and erase it, get rid of it if it's a mistake. Okay, that adds a little more drama. I like that a little bit better. All right, now, make this a little more leafy looking. This a little more leafy looking right in here. Now I'm gonna start my barn. Hang on. I think I'm gonna start my barn. Let me get a little more white right down here. Here we go. Just clean off my brush with this excess down here on this, in this grass. You want your picture interesting and you don't want them all predictable either. They should be kind of different. And there needs to be something in your picture to kind of take your eye. Just, you know, pull your eye. If somebody's walking, by your painting in an art gallery, what is it that's going to make them stop and look at it? Think about that as you're painting. All right, now, that's a good background. Now, the next thing I'd like to do is maybe get some of the vines. Now, let's do the trees next, I mean the barn next, and we'll do uh, the vines later. Now, if you'll notice, this barn is very background. It's like there's a haze and it's a lazy summer day, and it is in the distance. So you don't want a bright red barn. What we want to do, get into your white on your easel, 
And barns are red, yes, but sienna, the color sienna has got enough red in it to give us, I think, the red we need for this barn. And I'm not going to go and show every single clapboard in this subject. If you do the correct brush strokes, you don't have to do that. They will kind of appear. So here we go. I did sketch this out for time's sake, and that's helped me a lot. But you want to get your brush sideways, get an angle brush, turn it sideways, put it on the corner and pull down like this. See, you can see that as boards appearing all on their own. You don't have to help them a whole lot. Take it on down. Eventually the shape of the barn will emerge. There is a shadow on this side, so all this will be a little darker. And the lighter ones will be on this side. I'm going to angle this off a little so I don't lose my lines. Some of this barn has fallen apart and down into the, just because of age, we want to show that. Add a little black to get a little shadow back here. We don't want to take away from our tire swing though. That's going to be one of the cool things about this painting. Here we go. Here's the edge of my barn right here. This angle comes down like this. There we go. And you really don't have to have a super steady hand. Put your pinky down on your canvas if you have a real straight line you're working on and it will stabilize your hand. Just hold your pinky down. Yeah, you'll get paint on you, but if you're going to be an artist, you might as well get used to that. I think everything I own has paint on it. And I used to just wear cruddy clothes all the time because I knew I'd get paint on it, but I gave up on that. I thought, you know, might as well just mess up my good clothes too. Here we go. That's dark, and there's also a dark area right there. Now I'm going to cover that with moss in a little bit, but I want to go ahead and get it on right now. These edges are dark because of the overhang. There we go. Ta-da. There's a little door right down here. Let's go ahead and get that on with our edges. Now, let's start back on the boards again. Burnt Umber, Burnt Sienna, and a little white. There we go. Get rid of your fingerprints. Like I said, this side does have some shadow. And this side is a little lighter. That's because my light source is coming in this way, my painting. It's real important to find out where your light source is. And I would go to a larger brush to save time, but we'll lose our boards if I do. So you guys just hang with me. I'm adding a little light over here. And it is kind of vague, and, and the reason is because it's in a distance. We want to keep it in the background. So I don't want it real, real dynamic and deep. adding water as I go to make it flow. There's a line here. I had too much coffee, I can tell I'm shaky. There we go. Pull that down. Starting to see it. 
Can you guys see it? I'm starting to see it. Hey, I love going to the shore. I love going to the beach, but there's nothing like coming home and seeing something like this. Our barns, our mountains are beautiful. And I think getting away sometimes makes you appreciate them. We're getting ready to enter fall, and I can't wait. We'll do a real cool fall picture. Go. Some of these boards have leftover yuck on them, so I'm going to show a little leftover yuck right here. There's a little leftover yuck up in here. Don't make it too dark. Remember, we're background. This barn is in a distance. Trying to get rid of my canvas holes. I will tell you this. The more you spend on your canvas, the less canvas holes you'll have. If you go cheap on your canvas, you're going to have to struggle getting rid of those canvas holes. This one wasn't a top dollar canvas. I'll just be honest with you. And I can tell. Here's the roof of my barn. It's white, solid white. And it's probably not, but the reflection of the sun makes it look white. So that's what we're going to do. Now, I'll go back over that barn with a few leaves, that roof to make it look real. Now, there we go. Get back down here and finish this bottom part. I'm keeping it, trying to keep it muted so it looks hazy and in the background. You see my tire swing? I'm going to get behind and around it. And when you go in and you're doing background, you're going to run into the drawing in front. Like this tire swing is in front of the barn. And you're going to run into some of those lines, but it's okay. You can still see the lines. Don't panic. Don't try to stop and avoid getting into it because it won't look like it's in the background if you do. Just run right into your lines like this. You take hairspray and you spray those lines and they won't go away. Or an acrylic fixative. I use hairspray. It works just as well and it keeps those lines from going away. I can still see my tire swing well enough to paint it. Here we go. This is a good barn slap brush good size. It's kind of gray over here. Now, one thing, another trick with acrylic paint you can do to make it look like an oil so that it's, you may not want it real flat looking is use a acrylic, like I said earlier, acrylic glaze, and it will make it look like an oil painting. That way you don't have to wait on the drying time. Oils take, can take up to three to six months to dry, and acrylic dries within minutes. But if you want to cheat and make an acrylic painting look like an oil, somewhat, put a glaze or a poly or a varnish on it, and it will make it look like an oil painting without waiting on that drying time. You can ship it to somebody real quickly that way. Okay. There we go. You starting to see that barn? Let me get the door on. I'm going to make this part of the door a little lighter so that you can almost see inside. Gives you the illusion of being able to kind of look inside that barn, okay? So that light right there in that door will help you feel like it's just not shut. Okay, now one thing I want to do is check my lines. Okay, 
I want to get up here and sort of square off some of these uh, pieces up here to show the ends of those, the top of that barn right here. And it is dark up here because part of that barn has fallen off. So you see sort of down in the inside. Now I'm going to make a few definite blacky lines in here just to put some high detail. This is the fun part of any painting, I think, is your high detail. Getting a few slats in, putting some nail holes. This is a lot of fun. In my art class, I let the students do the hard part and then I'll go around and do some of the high detail. <laughs> That's the fun part. Here we go. Putting the moss and the all that stuff on there. Now we do have a, there's a hole right here like a barn slat has fallen off. I'm going to leave that right there. We're going to do a little moss on this. There we go. Now, there's some detail here where the barn has been built. It's got a top area and a bottom area. So I'm going to make that more distinct. There we go. Now, as you paint too, um, you know, you can leave an area, let it dry, come back in, you know, 30 minutes or so after you do another part and come back and work on it some more. And sometimes getting up and walking away from your painting for a little while, come back in and look at it after you hadn't seen it helps so much. You'll see things immediately that you need to change. I do that a lot. Just get up and walk away. There we go. A little more detail. There we go. Don't want it too distinct. And there's also an area here where the barn was built. So I forgot, let's leave, put that in too. That helps it look more realistic. Now, okay, I'm going to leave that for now. Well, no, I take that back. I'm going to do one or two more highlights. And I'm going to leave that and start with some things up here. Okay, now I am going to leave it. Let's let that dry. And I am going to do a little moss or a little ivy that's grown on the barn over time. Going to add a little yellow, green, and brown, and it gives it kind of a mossy green color. And I'm going to put it over here. There's something that's grown up on this barn because it's been out. It's been up for a long time. There we go. So let's get some moss on it. And it goes, now I'm going to use a cruddy brush again. There we go. And I'm just shoving it around right here, making some moss on this barn. I don't know about you guys, but I love a little moss on something. I think it looks cool. Here we go. You know, you can put yogurt on an outdoor statue and uh, without sounding like Martha Stewart and make it grow moss. And it gives the appearance, you know, of an aged something. There we go. I'm just dabbing on some moss here. And this helps my, my subject look a little more interesting. Okay. And it also helps us not to have to define what's behind that open area, that dark area we painted. Who knows? It's behind the moss, so we don't know what's back there. 
We'll do a little bit on this side too. Just a little bit. All right, now I am gonna start our trees. That's what this is and this is, and they're in the forefront of this painting, okay? So they're gonna be a little more detailed. They're a little bit closer to us. I'm gonna start at the bottom of this one, and I've got a bigger brush because we've got a lot of space to cover, and I'm gonna be a little more dark and deliberate right in here because these are in front, okay? So I'm doing black down here below, and I will cover up the base of that with that tall grass that you see. Now, be real steady with your hand. Get the very edge of that tree right here. I'm gonna do a little moss on this tree too. I'm really going crazy with it today. Here we go. Now, put a little knot in that tree just by wiggling your brush some. Okay, take it all the way up. Go. Now I'm adding a tiny bit of green to this brown to help it look a little more realistic. And you know what would really be cool is if you did want to add some texture to this tree, uh, you can add, this it sounds crazy, but you can add sand to your paint. Uh, you can add different things like oatmeal. You can add anything that's got a little texture to your paint and just paint it with it inside of it and it gives that product texture. Looks pretty cool too. Okay, I'm adding some more green. It will be brown, but since it's so close to you, you could see, probably see some texture. So let's add some different grooves and variances to this tree. It's real close to us. It's what we're looking beyond to see that barn. I'm gonna make it very vivid. Here we go. Do that by adding black and burnt umber. That tree is in front. I do have a little undeliberate yucky stuff in my paint from it sitting out probably little globules. Maybe they'll make it look better. Here we go. That black helps that pop. Real black down here. Now I'm gonna get right into my pure black right down here. Pull it up and make a few grooves up in here because this is tree bark. All right, now let's start on the other side. And this tree isn't quite as vivid as the first one, but it's still in front, so we want to make it pretty bold. We'll do a little more umber and white on this one so it's not quite as vivid as the one next to it. Now, here is a branch. Come on up here. This tree's kind of weird, but it kind of pulls over to this side. Brought it all the way up. Let me add some more white. Once again, you want to paint the sides of your canvas. Some artists wait till the end to do that. I, I usually do. All right. There we go. Adding green and brown now. Let's finish the edge of that branch. It's got a big old yucky hump on it right there. Then it goes up. And remember, this is in front. These trees are, so they do want to be bolder. OK. 
go. Isn't this fun? And it's actually going a little quicker than I thought. I'm going to add some green up in here and some white. This time of year, I like to get in a hammock. Now this has a tire swing, which is really nice too, but when you've got a hammock this time of year, it is just, it's starting to get a little cooler. The bugs aren't quite as bad. This is a good hammock time of year. Or a tree swing. Now, I'm gonna get down here into my grass and I will pull my grass in front of my trees here in just a minute. Let's let it dry some or you'll end up with brown grass. Getting rid of canvas holes. In other words, spend more money on your canvas than I did this time. I'm gonna highlight some of this up here, vague some of that tree away on the edges with my white paint so that it's got a little bit of interest to it. There we go. It's funny how that little bit of white makes a big difference. But you gotta remember, your light's coming from this way. So this side of the tree is gonna show a little bit more of a highlight. There we go. Now, all right. Now what I wanna do, there are a few ropey things hanging in this picture. They're pretty cool but they're coming from probably another tree in the distance. And I've got a different brush. This one's a little more sharp and an angle brush. And I wanna take it up here, pull it down, and just kind of waller some ropey stuff down in this painting. It gives it interest and it is there. You're not in the jungle, but you still do have ropey stuff hanging in old farm areas. And it's just leftover residue probably from another tree close by. Some of them are light, some of them are dark, but they are there. And it helps create a little interest too. This one just has it. Okay, there's a few little branchy things coming down here. A little branchy thing coming off this. Once again, we're getting into your high detail things that are fun to paint. Let's make a little hump on that tree to add some interest. There we go. Little interesting things on this side, just to reflect a little bit of light source on this tree. Give it some dimension. Now, let me get up here and get rid of some of these holes. Now, one thing I may have trouble with is getting the tire swing. Here we go, here is the rope. I don't wanna lose this. So I'm gonna kinda of go over it again. There we go. Just don't wanna lose it. It goes way up here. Line straight. Now. Okay. While the green and the brown are drying, let's go ahead and just do our tire swing. I'm going to add a little more black because I've got too much green in my black. Fresh black. Clean my brush. Get a sharp brush for this because there's quite a bit of detail. You have to make your edges really clean. So put your pinky down, get the edge of your brush, and follow your lines. There we go. And the tire swing is kind of the focal. This might make you want to quit your job and just go swing on a tire swing somewhere. And you know what? Life's kind of short. 
why don't you do that? Not quit your job, but why don't you go swing on a tire swing? Here we go. Now, in order to make it look realistic, we're gonna add a little bit of white on the inside. Give this little tire swing some depth and some detail. How cool is that? Add a little bit of white up here to the top for a little more highlight. And I want to put a little knot in my rope right here and fine tune my rope that it's hanging from. Hey guys, my hand is not that steady. I put my pinky down. I cheat. Here it is. All right. Then you might want to get a little white. Highlight, ooh, that's too much white. Highlight that rope just a little bit right here where the light source is to help it look realistic, okay? I'm gonna add a little more white up here. Now, I think our brown is dry enough to be able to go into the detail in front of my trees. We're going to get back into the green again. So green and yellow, a little bit of white, and let's get in front of these trees so that the yucky bottoms kind of go away, okay? And it helps add a little bit of interest down in here. This is what's closest to us are these, is the grass. So let's make it, looks like somebody hadn't mowed the yard in a really long time. They've probably been swinging on this tree. And we'll get into the white here, down below. I bet there's critters running around here. Yellow, green, right up in here. Get rid of that yucky tree bottom. I'm just shoving this paint around to create a bottom. Now, I'm gonna do some pretty bold highlights right up here in front. I'm getting into pure yellow with leftover green that's on my brush. That ought to do it. Maybe a little white. You want enough grass that you kind of wonder what's back there. Okay, get a little bit of grass back in here. I mean, it's this is an old barn. It's been there for a while. Okay, now that that green at the top has dried some, I'm gonna highlight just a few little few little leaves up here. You want some maybe to waller over your tree. Just to give it, there we go. Just up here on top. There's a little green something hanging off the side of that barn in the background here. This needs to come on top of the barn roof some. We're not sure what it is, but it's grown on there, okay? This helps create a little bit of depth, a little more realism. And guys, don't ever expect a total Rembrandt from this show because it's kind of quick. You know, you got three days to work on a project, it's gonna look good, but we do the best we can, giving you the idea of a fun painting it is easy and you need to try it. It's great therapy. 
And to be honest, right now, everybody is really enjoying trying art for the first time. I've had a lot of people show interest in wanting to learn how. Um, it is a lot of fun. Okay. And you can go on and on and on with your green up in here if you want to, as little or as much as you want. We'll highlight some of this and we'll be through. Ta-da, there we go. Be sure and find a good signing brush. Always sign your name, anything you do. That way, if you die a famous artist, your painting will be worth something. Signing your name is really hard. Find a cool way to do it. Do it up the tree, down the side. There we go. Thank you for watching today. It's been a lot of fun as usual, and stay creative.